Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how I spend my day doing art studies and digital paintings and also just how much I draw in a day, like a realistic day and there is some noise in the background, that's just my laundry, um, my washing machine I had a lot of laundry to do today so I will try to edit it out whenever possible and hopefully it's not too distracting I suppose I didn't make this video just for YouTube, it was really fun to film my day and notice my own patterns and it's always nice to reflect on my habits and it's gonna help me to get better in the future I got up around 8 and then I did some morning chores and stretches I was doing some watercolor painting the night before while I was drinking my morning coffee, I was looking at one of the paintings. I wanted to replicate some of that colors and textures in Procreate. This is a really gentle way to start my practice. I have had way too many brushes before and there are so many of them that I didn't really know how to use. So recently I decided to take some time to create like an overview of the brushes that click with me and write down how I like to use them. And also I try to limit the amount of brushes I have in each folder so I don't have to score and score and score to find the right one. That always feels like digging in the drawer. As I was going through this, I also tried to make the, the name of the brushes be more informative. Like I would write color variation or provide some kind of information about them so that when I'm in the painting process, I don't have to stop and figure things out. So every day I try to spend around 20 minutes or something dedicated to this. Procreate comes with 200 brushes. Imagine having 200 paint brushes in real life. I wouldn't have any space for them. So it's probably more convenient to choose a number of brushes that suits my needs and organize them in a way that they don't disturb my workflow. So I did that for a while and then I started breakfast and I also watched a oil pastel tutorial while I was eating. After that I chatted with my family a little bit and then I started reading one of the books I borrowed from the library. Because I have to return these books in a certain amount of time, I make sure that I prioritize them so that I have enough time to digest the information in them. When I was reading about her palette in this book, it reminded me that my watercolor palette has a bit too many colors in them right now because I just tried out a few new paints. I think I'm ready to remove some of them and simplify a little bit. When I started filming this morning, I forgot to include my clock in the frame so that you can tell how long time does it take for me to do everything. And when I was not filming, doing art stuff, I was probably just doing laundry, doing housework and things like that. I did some swatchings and refreshed my palette a little bit, squeezed out some new paints for the ones that were running low, and then I put it away to let it dry for the day. Then I went back to my digital painting. I was following a tutorial from Lowish. I joined her Patreon this month. She has like a massive amount of content there and I was following this tutorial for painting urban scenes. I 
I wasn't able to follow along in just one session because it was so much information and new techniques that I was not familiar with. Plus that I didn't know my brushes very well, so this is my second session. I noticed that I like to switch in between traditional learning materials like books and online content like this because it's just like I like to switch in between digital painting and traditional painting. I feel like digital painting, or at least the way I do it with the Apple Pencil and iPad, it doesn't, doesn't matter what brush I use, it always feels like it's still plastic and glass. I don't get the kind of tactile feedback, you know, like from the pencil scratching the paper or the water gliding on paper. So sometimes when I scribble in my sketchbook, it's almost like a form of compensation for the digital painting I was doing because it doesn't provide me that experience of getting my hands dirty. Which is kind of weird because I usually really hate it when my hands get, you know, smudged on the on the pencil sketches and your hands get so dirty. I really I really don't like that. <laughs> Around half past 11, I needed to charge the Apple Pencil, so I went back to another art book that I got from the library. This one is about Gustave Doré and his beautiful illustrations. I was struck speechless by this. They're just so mesmerizing and impactful. They're truly amazing, like I can spend hours looking at these. And it gives me some inspiration for Inktober. I've never participated in Inktober before because I don't really enjoy hatching with a fountain pen very much. I like line and wash with watercolor, but I'm not sure how that plays out in the Inktober challenge. But this book is giving me some idea and the urge to do something, something with ink. By the way, in my last video about exercises, I talked about practice in your sketchbooks. I just want to say that I didn't mean to bash any artists who use their sketchbooks for more finalized pieces. Of course, everyone should have the freedom to do whatever they want in their sketchbooks. It's just, I don't think it's that helpful for beginners to have that mindset. The anxiety generated from that kind of expectation can be a bit paralyzing sometimes. And that's not helping us to move forward, right? It was really cool to see someone comment, talk about their issue with perfectionism and feeling discouraged because we rarely see the effort it took for someone to perfect their craft. And as someone who started music education very early, I just wanted to share some of my experience with learning the piano. I know that Cynics has used the analogy that you can't just practice scales because you probably get bored and lose interest, although I completely agree with him on this. I just remember how thrilled I was when I finally get to start learning scales because before that I had to practice for weeks and months to learn how to even lift the finger and put it down on the piano in the right way and do the exercise you hear right now. It sounds pretty horrible for a five-year-old child and all the music students in my kindergarten had to do it this way for weeks and months on end. Compared to this, I think the scales is actually not that boring after all. I tried to find a word for unsightly for the ears, but anyway. I think because how invested I was in my inner music child, it gave me a sense of self-appreciation and that slowly led to confidence. And sometimes that can come across as snobbish. I know I sure was when I was a child. 
I remember thinking my classmates are just like unpracticed peasants and I'm like the princess on the practice high ground. I know, it's completely ridiculous. I think this kind of pride probably come from the feeling of being frequently humble to the ground and then struggling to get back up and it gives a sense of entitlement to feel proud. And there is absolutely no shame in trying and failing. It just it just happens on a daily basis. So the concept of effortless is almost like insulting in so many ways. So don't believe in that. Another book that made me really want to sketch with ink and fountain pen is this Taiwanese urban sketching book. It's such a shame that this book doesn't come in English yet. I spoke to the author on Instagram and I asked him if he wants to make English version in the future. He said that the translation process is usually initiated by the publisher from an English speaking country. So he's waiting for a chance to see if that's possible. I don't know how these things work, but I just really wish that there is something we can do to get this kind of content out there in English for more people to see. He also has another book that is more like a tutorial about materials process and they're just fantastic. They're really valuable for anyone who is interested in urban sketching. So if you know how the publisher side of things work for this kind of situation, please let me know or if there's any way we can help because these books really deserve to be seen by the world. While I was flipping through these beautiful sketches, I got a notification that Lois just uploaded her tutorial of this month, which is about line weight. I wanted to watch it immediately, but first I had to go to the store and run some errands. When I was at the grocery store, I took some pictures for reference. I imported them to Procreate before I forgot about them. And I did some editing to experiment with the composition. And then I went back to my urban scene painting. I was running out of space on my SD card and my camera needed charging, so I didn't do much more in the afternoon. I did dishes and made dinner and watched more oil pastel tutorials while I was eating dinner. Later that evening, I felt like I wanted to do some gesture drawing. Partially because I bought this tool a year ago, it's called Sticky Bones and it's a posing tool. I bought it for a year but it's just been sitting there collecting dust. I barely used it and I felt kind of guilty because this thing is really expensive. I think when I got it last year, I wasn't able to get the proportions right and I was a bit discouraged. But now I feel like I'm ready to try it again. I will put the process somewhere around here. I like that this posing tool has a separate part for the core. Unlike many other posing tools, you have the rib cage and then the hip. It's usually a ball in between to connect them. But this one has a core section and it's really fun to manipulate it to make it look like a real person. And it's making my sketches look more dynamic.
The tracking time says that I did this for about 30 minutes and after that I felt pretty tired. I did some stretches, took a shower and then I was just relaxing in bed. So that's how much art related stuff I do in a day. Realistically, I can probably do a little bit more than this because the filming did take some energy as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so grateful for all your comments. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.